Thanks for sticking with us here on Adelante Chicago. Our next guest is, let me run through the list, activist, political strategist, philanthropist, author, and the father of the Tony Award-winning creator of Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda. We are talking about Luis A. Miranda, Jr., who just released his book titled Relentless, My Story of the Latino Spirit That is Transforming America. Luis, thank you so much for joining me today uh, from New York, I believe. Yes, I am in New York. Thank you very much for having me. It is such a pleasure. I told you I'm on page 101, and it is such a fun read because you give us a good insight into not just your life, but the experience of so many Latinos fighting for schools and equity. Why did you decide to write this now? Exactly because of that. Initially, it was supposed to be a political book. Uh, I continue to read uh, every time there was an election since 2020, that Latinos are voting this way, that they're turning this, that they're turning the other. And I kept complaining, and my friends finally <laughs> said, rather than complaining, why don't you put down the 45 years of your own experience uh, in activism and politics within the Latino community? And I did, but in doing that, immediately my family became a protagonist uh, of the story since we do everything together. Yeah, and one of the things that I noticed in the book is that it's almost like a how-to for politicians who want to understand the Latino vote. What would you tell them about that vote? Because I think oftentimes they think, oh, they're Latinos and they put us all into a block, and it's not always that way. I, I, absolutely. I think the first thing that I will tell them is that they need to get rid of the paradigm of politics is either black, African-American, and white. That Latinos are a totally different flavor. And that within the Latino community, there's more you have to understand in terms of generations where we were born, the political conditions of our countries of origin, what was happening in our cities or rural areas when we landed, who are our neighbors, all of those things are important ingredients in deciding the politics of your Latino community. Yeah, uh, you know so much about the topic. I know you've served as a political strategist, uh, worked for uh, in New York for the couple of administrations, really. Talk about why, did you ever think about running for office yourself? Is that something that you would consider maybe in the future, something you would be interested in? No, now I'm too old uh, to do that. <laughs> I doubt uh, that. That now I, I, I want to continue uh, to assist and do everything I can uh, to make sure that younger Latinos get into politics. I believe that politics is a noble uh, office, it's a noble activity uh, to be engaged in. And there's so many. Uh, amazing Latinos in politics throughout the country that I have gotten to meet through Latino Victory Fund, that i rather spend my energy making sure that they go to the next stage of their political development than anything dealing with me. Yeah, and I know that you talk about having Latinos be fully integrated into the United States. Describe what you mean by that, what you would like to see here in the coming, let's say, even the coming decade. Uh, I, I'm looking to a Sancocho, <laughs> uh, where you could taste each piece of the stew, but in its totality, the stew is delicious. That's who we are as a community, 65 million strong, about to be 40% of the U.S. population in less than 15 years. So that's what I mean. There's no more integration. You know, uh, when you look at some of our icons, Shakira, Bat Bunny, Mark Anthony, Jennifer Lopez, Lin Manuel Miranda, all very different cultural phenomenons, representing different styles, but all part of that mosaic that is the Latino community. I was looking through some of the pictures in the book, uh, I think it was this morning, and I love all of them because you share so much of your 
personal story, and hopefully we can show some of them as we're talking to you here. Uh, you talk about your wife, Luz, which I never knew very much about, but she is, like, amazing. I can't wait to meet her someday because she's so strong. Uh, talk about how you guys work together, what makes your relationship so special uh, with, with her and just really with the rest of your family. 46 years and going. Not, yeah. not, not a bat, batting average uh, for for a marriage, I think that what makes us work is that we all have our lanes and that we all have our strengths and we know and the family knows when to go to whom to talk about what. And the sessions are made as a family. I always remember um, my wife went to Catholic schools with nuns, which means that for my wife, her favorite word is no. <laughs> uh, imagine my daughter growing up as a teenager in New York and being told no to parties or to everything because it was too dangerous. And the kids learn that they needed to come to me first. I will talk to them what will be the best strategy to approach lose and what we all needed to do to get a yes out of her because they all knew if she said no i'm not going to go behind her back it's a no as a family. So we know our roles yeah. in the family and how to make it work. She's so strong. Boy, uh, I hope I get a chance someday to meet her. Uh, she, I, I love the story where you talk about it was somebody staying in your house and they were like, Luce, aren't you going to get him the meal or dinner? And she says, he's got hands. He can go get uh, the dinner himself, <laughs> which tells yeah, you a that's... lot about who she is. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's actually uh, the lady that Lin-Manuel calls Abuela Claudia. Yeah. Uh, and the inspiration for Abuela Claudia in the Heights is the person who raised me and then who we brought to New York yeah, to live with it. us mm -hmm. uh, when Lin-Manuel was born. And Mundi belonged to a different generation that saw women serving men. So the fact that I will come to the house, that dinner will be made, and that it will not occur to lose to serve me food, irk her to no end. <laughs> and many times she will say, your husband, it's home. And she said, I know, I saw him, but he needs to eat. Yes, and he has two oh, able hands to serve himself. There you go. It says a lot about her and a lot about you, too, um, and the relationship that you both have. Uh, such a great book. I'm looking forward to speaking to you or with you on June 12th as we do a project and a sit-down with the National Museum of Puerto Rican Arts. And there's the information on your screen. It's Wednesday, June 12th from 5.30 to 7.30. To get more info on tickets, you can go to nmprac.org slash event. Uh, I send you lots of hugs and kisses. We'll see you in a couple weeks. I'm looking forward to having that conversation <laughs> with you at the museum.